How much harm will the Federal Reserve inflict when it meets next week? Hello, I'm Steve Forbes, and this is What's Ahead, where you get the insights you need to better navigate these turbulent times. The Federal Reserve's policymaking committee gets together in a few days, and speculation is centering on whether the central bank jacks up interest rates one more time. The economy has been performing better than expected, but the relentless focus on interest rates is misplaced. Few observers ask the right question. Does the Fed actually know how to fight inflation? The answer is no. Our central bank still confuses two kinds of inflation, non-monetary and monetary. Non-monetary price increases come about when normal production is interrupted by events like natural disasters or war or excessive and costly regulation or those COVID lockdowns that severely disrupted global supply chains. Monetary policy can't cure clogged ports or the government hindering the production of energy. The Federal Reserve can control monetary inflation. Monetary inflation comes from reducing the value of the dollar, usually by creating too many of them. This is what our central bank did on both the eve of the COVID-19 pandemic and during its first year. Print a lot of money and trouble results. But the Fed believes curing inflation necessitates slowing the economy down. Reducing demand is their favorite expression here. Now, experience repeatedly demonstrates that this is nonsense, but central bankers everywhere treat it as holy writ. You'll rarely, if ever, hear officials and economists talk about pursuing a stable currency. Yet this is the key cure for inflation. The Fed is acting like a quack doctor that refuses to administer antibiotics to fight a bad bout of pneumonia. Jacking up rates inflicts unnecessary harm. But this is not the only sin of the Fed. After the financial crisis of 2008 and 2009, the Fed bought trillions of dollars worth of bonds. In effect, to finance this, the Fed borrowed trillions of dollars of short-term money, sucking up money that deprived small businesses of the funds they needed for working capital. This was a critical reason the recovery from the Great Recession was so poor. The Fed and other central banks suppressed interest rates. That enabled governments to get bigger and bigger. They could engage in massive spending and have their bills paid by their central banks buying up their bonds at virtually zero rates of interest. Free money. Politicians loved it. Bigger governments, by definition, however, mean slower growth because the money they spend is a huge misallocation of capital. Powell and company also hurt the inflation fight by refusing to criticize actions by government that weaken the economy, excess spending, high tax rates, and the avalanche of growth-stunting regulations. If these current policies from Washington are not changed, the economy will go into recession, thereby creating pressure for more spending and subsidies, which in turn will put pressure on the Fed to start purchasing bonds again to finance the bigger deficits. This, in turn, will trigger another round of inflation. Too bad Powell and the institution he heads is incapable of properly diagnosing inflation and applying the right medicine. We'll all pay the price. I'm Steve Forbes. Thanks for listening. Do send in your comments and suggestions. I look forward to being with you soon again. Music